New today, code enforcement inspectors will be hired for each quadrant of the city of Rochester. That's just one of the updates provided from Rochester's Housing Quality Task Force. That's right. Isabel Garcia has been following this task force since it was first announced two years ago. She joins us now in studio with key points renters and landlords need to know. Is he? Yes, good evening to both of you. I just received some clarification on this. There is one vacancy left in code enforcement with 17 total officer positions. Now, the mayor today emphasized the analogy he's been using of the saber-toothed tiger, referencing the teeth he and his administration have been using when it comes to targeting landlords and owners not keeping up with their properties. Legislation and litigation. That's what the city of Rochester's housing attorney says are the two focal points in how they're holding delinquent landlords accountable. Per a law change last year establishing a vacant building registry with a deadline of January 31st this year, any property owner in the city with a vacancy for 60 days or greater must register the building with the city. The owners have an obligation to get to us a plan to rehabilitate that building and get it occupied again or to demolish it. If they don't do that, we're going to charge them significant fees. And the fees increase depending on the size of the property and the number of units. On the matter of litigation, more than 30 cases against landlords have been taken to court with the law department first focused on those with the largest portfolios demonstrating issues. City housing attorney Patrick Beath gives an example stating Hershon Estates owns a number of units in bad condition. So the city brought forth a lawsuit, was ordered a judgment of more than $250,000, but they never showed up to court. They defaulted. So you might say, well, then what good is that if you can't even get their attention? We've got their attention because their lenders found out because they're all part of the lawsuit, too. And they've all started for, to foreclose on Hirshhorn properties. Also of note, one week ago, housing advocates rallied in front of City Hall calling for City Council to take part in a rent control study. This following new state guidelines rolled out in December on how to determine rental vacancy rates. Mayor Malik Evans did not outright deny or affirm support for such a study, but did say there are a variety of factors related to the matter. I think if we can find the dollars, I think it's something that we're, that, that we're going to look at, and it's something that we've, we're having conversations with, um, with, with, with City Council about. So we should have more to come on that soon. Now, another change. This document here, it's called the Landlord-Tenant Bill of Rights, and it's not a legal document, but rather a single-page cheat sheet, if you will, laying out both the rights and responsibilities of each party. It's designed and distributed by the city as of the first of this year. This document will be mailed out to both tenants and rental property owners on an annual basis. For now, back to you at the desk. Very interesting, Isabel. Thank you. Another point made today, the city has received more than $530,000 from fines awarded in court actions so far.